It has been a long time since we've done one of these, but welcome to Hourglass Cinema. And now playing, we are going to be talking about the movie, The Human Trial. My name is Captain Nostalgia, and today I am joined by a man who has been on the show several times to talk about everything from Digimon to demons, and now he's here to talk about diabetes. <laughs> All the Ds, man. Uh, Mr. Ronald a Webster. Hello. It's a well, quite a quite a unique resume you've obtained here for for victims and villains. Uh, so, uh, but uh, so <clears throat> we're going to be talking. To, we're going to spend the first few minutes talking about, uh, as I said, the human trial. Uh, my name is Captain Nostalgia, and uh, I'm one of the hosts. Pod, I'm one of the podcasters, writers, and the director of our film festival, uh, Rufik Hope, uh, here at Victims and Villains. And uh, this is a mini episode where we talk about movies, uh, just kind of giving our honest, uh, open discussions on them. And today we're talking about the human trial. The human trial is going to be hitting uh, availability with limited release and uh, theaters as well as uh available everywhere digitally beginning due 24th and the movie follows uh, is a documentary that follows uh, a few select individuals going suffering with uh, born with I guess the sufferings is a word but we'll get into that uh, with type 1 diabetes and uh, an experimental drug to uh, essentially cure type 1 diabetes and uh we believe representation representation matters here, victims and villains. And Ron has uh, actually shared his story way back when uh, about uh, how type one diabetes has uh, affected his own mental health and his own life. And uh, so that's why I asked him to be a part of this and uh, kind of give us a, a, before we start talking about the movie, can you kind of talk about your own relationship with type one diabetes? Yeah, um, so I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was eight years old. Um, I'm 32 now. I don't really remember what life without diabetes is like. Um, And so uh, it's been a struggle most of my life, uh, especially when I was a teenager. You know, once those hormones start pumping. Um, and you start going through puberty, things get a little weird. I was suicidal for a little while um, because I just couldn't get my blood sugars under control. It didn't seem worth it. Um, I was told growing up that I needed to take care of myself or I could, you know, lose my feet. I could die. I could go into a coma. Um, you know, I was always, am I... I was told that out of love because people wanted to keep me safe. But when you're, when you're constantly um, being faced with that reality as a child, it just, it messes with you. Um, And so in my teenage years, I went through a very deep depression. I actually um, tried to overdose on insulin three times. And, um, once Jesus got my heart, a lot of that stuff changed. You know, I wasn't depressed. I wasn't suicidal anymore, but it didn't change the fact that living with type one diabetes is a struggle. Um, you know, and, uh, you and I don't just have the pleasure of knowing each other for like 17 years, but, or 15 years now, but we also work together and, you know, there are days where, I mean, you know, cause I don't come in like myself where, I come in and my blood sugar has been so messed up the night before that I didn't sleep. Um, it's been so messed up as I'm waking up that my body hurts. I I don't want to do anything. I'm slow. I'm sluggish. I, you know, all I want to do is, uh, sleep and, uh, you know, so, um, I was only ever hospitalized for it when I was diagnosed. I have not been to the hospital, (laughs) with any major concerns. So I've been really blessed uh, in that aspect, I guess. Um, You know, well, I'm going to call it blessed. Some people might think I'm crazy. Uh, 
for a little while when I was a teenager, my blood sugars were so sporadic that I remember checking my blood sugar one time and my blood sugar was 18 and I was still walking around. And um, when my dad called my doctor, my doctor was like, what do you mean he's 18 and still conscious? Like he should be in a coma right now. And um, or at least like, you know, passing out. And um, so I've had I've had some really intense blood sugars like that and still been OK, still been functional. Um, I, in the documentary, one of the things that hit me was just how bad it can be for some people. Uh, you know, they talk they talked about a couple of times where uh, they've been so out of it that someone else had to take care of them. Luckily for me, that's only happened three times, two of which were after trying to OD on insulin when I was a teenager. And once was, um, you know, uh, a little while after that, just because of a bad, uh, I just didn't eat enough after I gave myself insulin for lunch, you know, so uh, just an honest mistake. Um, I haven't had anything like that since then. I have not had anything like that as I've been an adult, but it doesn't change the fact that it's constantly on my mind. You know, one of the things that sucks about type one diabetes is that um, it's not just something that you can take a pill for in the morning or in the evening and then not think about it the rest of the day. You're constantly thinking about it, no matter what it affects every area of your life, whether that's, you know, how you sleep, how you eat, what you're thinking about eating, what you're thinking about doing throughout the day. Um, you have to constantly change your insulin intake based on what you're doing throughout the day. If you're doing something abnormal for your, for yourself, it's just, uh, that's just a lot. It's just a huge stress. So. Well, uh, let's get let's jump into, to the movie. Um, I think for me, this movie adds someone that, you know, knows people that have diabetes you know i think you say um there you say diabetes and or you say diabetic and there's this uh generalization that ends up happening so like i have people in my own family that are diabetic and then i also have people on my wife's side of the family that uh were diagnosed diabetic once after we got married and then I've also known you who's also diabetic. And to me, like uh, they would say type one, they would say type two, but like, I think this movie like really opened up my eyes on the differences between both of the, the types. And yeah. also on top of that, you kind of, it put it in perspective a lot better of the mental health struggles that I, 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 got to see you go through first times and also like the the individuals who are undergoing this trial in the movie uh really kind of really kind of brought the the, the struggle and the mental health of type 1 diabetes to the surface where it's just like okay i don't necessarily know like i, I know that there's like differences in like how the body like accepts slash rejects like sugar but also at the same time, like, I know your, your story about like, uh, not wanting to live anymore and, and trying to OD on, on insulin. And, but over here, like I have my, my father-in-law people in my own family that are diabetic, that don't struggle with that, that, that mental health. And I think this movie was, was really eye opening to kind of see, but also at the same time, like is seeing the history of, uh, kind of how the pharmaceutical industry has kind of really raped essentially people that have type one diabetes as well. Yeah, man. One of the things that, I mean, so I watched it, I watched it twice in order to get ready for this. And the first time I just cried the whole way through. And one of the things that really broke me was when Greg patient number two pulls out him and his wife pull out this huge basket of nothing but medical bills. And I like lost it, you know, because um, I mean, my wife and I are in, are in a lot of debt right now that we're having trouble paying off um, and we're doing it steadily, but we're having trouble paying it off because 
you know, there was a time period where our insurance sucked so bad that we had to pay a thousand dollars for a month's worth of insulin. Um, and we were lucky if it lasted a month. Um, and luckily we got like some great people in our church that really helped take care of us, uh, after we let everyone know what we were going through, but, um, it doesn't change the fact that it's still just expensive. It's so expensive. Um, and we're treated like a political, <laughs> my son's yelling for me. Um, uh, so I'm sorry <laughs> you hear that in the background, but, um, we're treated like, uh, political pawn pieces a lot of times you know um between the left and the right uh you know uh, i think one of the biggest instances this year uh or this past year is regardless of how you feel about about trump or biden um one of the things that trump was going to do was sign a bill to make insulin affordable throughout the across the united the, the entire united states it was one of the first bills that president biden got rid of um and then in like november he would he freaked out and couldn't believe how high insulin prices were and why no one had done anything about it and uh and so things like that constantly happen um where we just we get screwed um we just get screwed over because no one cares you know um not that no one cares but I don't know. I don't know why we are used as like what we're used for. <laughs> sure. It's like, and it's like Greg says in the movie, like, you know, this is a, a giant pharmaceutical, uh, you know, win. like this is a billion dollar industry. And one of the things that uh, the lines that I really think is that, um, you know, they, they mention in here that, f- that insulin was never meant to be a, a business. It was, it was a breakthrough, you know, in 1921, uh, when uh, Sir Frederick G. Bentington, uh, Charles H. Best and HHR uh, McLeod, like discovered insulin, it was a real breakthrough. So when they sold the patent to, uh, to the university of Toronto, they sold it, for a dollar because their goal was to uh you know give freely this gift of life to to people that were suffering with type 1 diabetes or whose bodies couldn't produce insulin enough insulin or you know had to off be offset by you know whatever reasons and ever since then we've turned it into this this billion dollar industry yeah yeah, and it's and it's awful because it doesn't take that much money to make insulin. You know, it doesn't take that much money at all, and it's it's just frustrating because you know people are siphoning insulin in order to keep it longer, so they don't have to pay for it as often. And these these people who are siphoning it are you know going into comas, they're dying, they're being hospitalized every other day, um, and it's not something that's talked about on the news. You know, it's not something that's presented. To the general public, um, the frust- the frustrating thing I think for me is that type two diabetes, which is oftentimes preventable, oftentimes reversible, uh, the drugs don't cost nearly as much. Um, you see commercials for type two diabetes all the time, you know, uh, whether on TV yeah. or on streaming services, and no one knows about the stuff that type one diabetics go through or how much money we're spending or how often we're hospitalized. Um, And uh, it's just incredibly frustrating to be a people group, uh, you know, that is oftentimes overlooked. Um, So it's just, it's just very frustrating. Yeah, and I mean, I I'm also like surprised uh, about this to see how this movie will uh, play out in the long term, because right, because this is a movie that it takes place over the course of seven years, where uh, 
about roughly about two dozen people kind of take this experimental procedure that uh, inserts a artificial uh, yeah. pancreas into them no. in order to see if uh, their their body can essentially produce insulin through this artificial pancreas. And I don't want to give away spoil where, where the movie ends up going in the end, because I, I do think that it is important for people to watch this movie. Um, yeah. But just kind of with some of the things that this film discusses, I'm almost curious to see if this film will uh, kind of be buried uh, the way that other things are like, there's trials going on right now in New York that people are coming out of going in with heavy cancer and coming out completely cured. Um, then, you know, even coming back into the nineties where there was two people that invented uh, cars successfully uh, converted their cars to run completely on water and magically like disappeared under weird circumstances so i'm almost kind of curious where this movie ends up um in the grand scheme of things because i don't think this i don't think any of this research would have surfaced had it not been for this documentary yeah yeah uh there have been um Trials and stuff like this have been going on for a very, very long time, um, since, since the 90s. I don't know if they've ever gotten this far, but in the beginning of the movie, one of the things that the main filmmaker says is, um, you know, in the, in the diabetic community, the, the, it's become a running joke that the cure is always five years away. And that's a very, that's a very real thing. Um, you know, when I was first diagnosed, I was told that, you know, uh, I might be diagnosed, but I may not be a diabetic for long. And that was, you know, a long, long time ago. And um, <laughs> it just keeps going, you know. Uh, I've been a diabetic for over 20, how long has it been now? It's almost 25 years. Almost 25 years. And uh, that's just the thing that happens. And like I said, it's 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 been a long time coming. I don't know how close people got before this. Um, there have been rumors of a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that people were working on for a long time was a diabetic inhaler, where you actually inhaled insulin rather than having to take shots, which would have saved a lot of people, um, you know, uh, a lot of money because having to take shots or even do an insulin pump, there's so much that goes into that. Whereas an mm. inhaler is just an inhaler. And as far as I know, uh, I think they had a positive test. And after they had a positive test, we didn't hear about it anymore. So it's really heartbreaking. And just to kind of like also put this into perspective for listeners, the the movie Captivates, like, uh, you know, I'm all about like statistics and like knowing like the education of like how serious an issue is. And uh, this movie captivates and says that uh, over 5 million people die each year from uh, either a lack of insulin or just some, something related to type one diabetes. And I mean, that's that's so heartbreaking because again, like, you know, as, as it going back to what they were saying is like, you know, insulin was never, desire to be a business it was never desired to be this billion dollar empire that we've established it as it was a breakthrough and it was a revolutionary uh thing that was supposed to allow type individuals with type 1 diabetes to continue to live day to day and just to be normal yeah yeah um again like over five about five million people die of type one diabetes a year and uh no one talks about it (laughs) it's not talked about it's not the general public is not aware at all um and that's kind of one of the things that i appreciated about the movie the most was how much they focused on just bringing awareness to the struggle of having type one diabetes 
Yeah, I think this movie does a really good job at like capturing the struggle uh, between its two primary subjects in uh, how do you how do you say her name? Marin. Marin and Gregory. I think the the two of two subjects that this filmmaker captures, and he um, even the filmmaker. Correct me if I'm wrong. The filmmaker herself also had struggled with type one diabetes. Correct. Yes, she did. Yeah, um, she did a movie with her taking her blood sugar with her son, and uh, it being two hundred and ninety six, which is not great, not a good feeling. <laughs> um, and her uh, talking to her doctor, and her doctor basically suggesting that she might be developing neuropathy. Um, in her feet so kind of which uh, again yeah so like uh can you kind of talk about a little you know the movie touches upon it but um can you kind of talk about the the actual like physical effects that it can you know we've talked about a lot about the mental health but like the physical effects that type 1 diabetes can have on the body yeah yeah um so the movie goes over a couple different things um so one of the effects of having type 1 diabetes, if you don't take care of yourself, is developing neuropathy um, in your feet, which is, it starts off as a tingling sensation. It can develop into being pins and needles. Um, it's basically your nerves are dying because your blood sugars are so messed up that, uh, you know, your body's breaking down. Um, people who have severe neuropathy actually have to have their feet, toes, legs amputated. Um, uh, a mentor of mine had type two diabetes and uh, actually had to have one of his legs amputated and it's how he died. He kind of just lost the will to live after that. And um, his, his was an extreme, you know, extreme case. Um, you know, one of the things that develops is retinopathy, which is essentially the nerves in your eyes and behind your eyes breaking down and blowing out. Um, going blind, uh, you know, having blood in your eyes, and all kinds of different crazy things. Uh, and that's just, those are just like some of the more intense side effects of not taking care of yourself. Um, now, some things that are more directly related are like, if my blood sugar is low, um, I could pass out and go into a coma uh, and, you know, eventually die from that if my blood sugar is too high for me personally my whole body cramps up I feel like I'm super dehydrated I, I get really lethargic I can't you know I, I don't want to move um, for a long periods of time I, I end up having a really bad headache um, you know uh, and those are some of the more mild symptoms um, in the movie Marin starts talking about some of her symptoms and when her blood sugar gets low, uh, she actually goes into full blown seizures and, uh, her husband or, or one of her family members has to actually help her get her blood sugar back up so that she, um, you know, is stable. She can't do it herself. And, um, Greg admitted in the movie to having really bad headaches, both when they're, when he's low and when he's high. Um, he, I mean, he even admitted to that, just having constant headaches since being diagnosed with diabetes, um, at one point, uh, you know, so, and, and that's just the physical things that goes into it. That's not even the, the mental health aspect or the emotional health aspect that goes into things because it's, it is, man, it's just so draining. It's so draining, um, to have to think about and focus on all the time and account for try to account for every little detail of, of every day. Um, you know, if you, <laughs> you might like having it, if you are, uh, if you, <laughs> if you like pain and you like being in control all the time, <laughs> uh, I'm not that type of person. I don't like either of those things. I like to be more go with the flow and, uh, Type one diabetes makes it hard to, to go with the flow, um, you know. So, 
uh, hospitalizations are pretty frequent with type one diabetics, like we, we said a couple times earlier. And uh, like the movie says, um, so yeah, those are those are some of the side effects that that can happen from it. Um, there's probably more that I'm not uh, accounting for or thinking of at the moment. Uh, and and every diabetic is different, you know. Like uh, they both have different reactions to how their blood sugars go, both Marin and Greg in the movie, and I'm sure the filmmaker did too. Although I don't ever remember getting her name in the movie. Um, you know, and, and like I said before, my symptoms are typically pretty light when my blood sugars are high or low. So I'm not, uh, I'm not one who, who gets crazy, uh, with it, you know, not that they go crazy, but you know, I'm not, um, my symptoms are just mild. They, they don't, they don't typically get as bad as others do. Now, would you say that, like, uh, for for like for the more extreme symptoms, is that something that you have to like live with for like thirty years or something like that, or is it again? Does it go back to that the what you were talking about previously, where it's every diabetic is different? Um, you know, man, it's funny. I, I don't know very many diabetics, so I think it's hard to tell. Um. Maybe I do know more diabetics than I realize, and I just we look so normal. That's that's kind of the one of the things they touched on in the movie too is that a lot of people don't realize who we are or what we have because we just look normal most of the time. And uh, so uh, the patients in the movie made it a point to talk about how their you know the things that they go through have been long term. Um, so I think it can be long term. I think it is long term for a lot of people. Uh, cause their bodies just get used to it. Um, but I, I, I know that for some people, other people, uh, it's a one-time deal and then it changes. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I think, I think it's a mixture of both, um, you know, so, okay. Well, I don't want to get into too much of this movie. Uh, I think we've we've talked about it just just enough to kind of tease it, and but also talk about its importance. Uh, the movie is called The Human Trial. It comes out uh, everywhere June twenty fourth. I highly recommend you guys checking it out. Uh, but we have to give Rorschach rating scales. So uh, zero to five. Where would this movie land for you, sir? Um. Probably a four out of five, just because of the emotional impact it had on me. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely four out of five. I thought the, I thought uh, the filming was was really great. Uh, I thought the narration, when there was narration, um, was very pinpointed. Uh, it really captured a lot of emotion. It packed in a lot of information, um, and it kept you intrigued and invested in the stories of the individuals uh that it followed around so uh, i would say probably a four out of five for me i'm gonna go slightly a little bit lower and say 3.5 i think like you're saying like this movie for a documentary that's made on a independent budget looks absolutely stunning i was really surprised by a lot of the cinematography and how rich this movie looks but also on top of that this movie is it's very eye-opening it's very uh captivating it's heartbreaking it packs a lot of emotions in it's 93 minute runtime and uh I, I fully agree i think this is a movie that a lot of people need to give a chance because uh i will i was really hesitant on uh approaching this movie the first time and i'm glad that i did watch it because again it it really puts into perspective the struggle that type one uh diabetics go through um you know like it said like the movie opens up like one of the very first things like it said like i look healthy but i'm not and yeah. i think this this really allows people to kind of see not just the future of what medicine could look like for type one diabetics but what their mental health it looks like now yeah yeah, so I agree. 
All right. Well, uh, if you guys are, if you guys check this movie out, we'll provide links in the show notes below. You guys can follow our parent company, Victims and Villains. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, wherever you guys get your podcast from, and Patreon as well. If you're a filmmaker and would like to support, would like to submit your shorts features or screenplays to next year's horrific hope uh, all of those links are going to be in the show notes of, as well uh ron where can people find your podcast if they uh, are curious yeah so i run a podcast for my church called highland park community church um <clears throat> you can go to spotify google podcasts uh, wherever you find your podcast and just simply search for highland park community church and uh we're up there so all right well uh thank you guys make sure that you guys check out the human trial once again it comes out june 24th let us know what you guys think and uh have a good night i hope you guys enjoyed the show